Coming. I'm working out a, a, a last minute kink. Okay, last minute kink. Yes, sir. All right. While we're working out the last minute kink, um, good to see everybody here tonight. Yeah. Uh, you notice that it is a lot lighter when you come to church and leave yeah. church on Wednesday night at time is going to be For anybody who's at home, 
you were thinking that I don't like driving in the dark, we probably got to go. That's right. Yeah. So it's it's good good to be here. Um we hanging on, hanging on to the hang on. Um let me know when we live, Jay. <laughs> Why are we doing that? We were in chapter three when last we met. And, and <coughs> we are running in chapter four. As a matter of fact, chapter three. Chapter three. Verses 14 through 16 connects directly with chapter 4, verses 1 uh, through 10. So we'll, we'll pick up for a second uh, and look at where we are. And we'll be ready to go. Ready. Ready like Freddy. <laughs> We all? Yes, sir. All right. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Wednesday in the Word. I'm Pastor Diamond. Welcome to App City. Everybody here, uh, good to see you. It's online, good to see you and have you. Come on, let's get started. Last we met, we, we left off in James, the book of James. Um, thank you, sir. The book of James, chapter four. Chapter four, and we're going to start off with verses one through ten. And we are uh, looking at a worldly attitude, worldly attitude. Keep, keep that in mind, worldly attitude, and we're going we gonna to press on. Uh, that's large enough for y'all. I don't know what it is. But it's, it's, I put it on there. It's big and it shrinks down. This. Um, chapter 4, verses 1 through 6 in the NIV. Uh, verse 1 says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Uh, don't they come from your desire that battles within you? Uh, you want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You don't have because you do not ask God. And when you ask, verse 3 says, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motive. Mm -hmm that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that the spirit he calls to live in us envies intensely? But he gives us more grace. Mm -hmm. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. All right. Uh, when last we met in chapter 3, verses 14 through 16, 
James has discussed a philosophy of life that is characteristic of the ungenerated mind, the unsaved mind, and is a major ingredient of worldliness. And so now in chapter 4, verses 1 through 10, uh, he examines this worldly attitude in greater detail. First, he identifies the source of worldly antagonism. It's an inward fight, he says. Uh, look at it. Verse 1 says, instead of the climate of peace um, necessary for the production of righteousness, which he talked about in verse 18 of chapter 3, James's readers were living in an atmosphere of constant fights and quarrels. James say, listen, there's a mess in the church because y'all got all this fighting and arguing going on. All right. Uh, these two nouns, uh, Polemoi and Makai, were normally used of national warfare, but they had also become common uh, with forceful expressions for any kind of open antagonism. And so it's it it's it's some um, rubbing of the wrong way going on in in, in with with the, with the believers. Mm -hmm. And James has to address this. Why why y'all cutting the fool like this? Mm -hmm. Why y'all got all this arguing and going on these fights and quarrels? Um, James asks, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Let's get to the root of. It. And so he says, here it is. The root of it is. Um, he answers with which he expects his readers to agree is don't they come from your desires? Mm -hmm. uh, you can underline that word desires in your Bible because we're going to go a little <laughs> deep with it. Um, desires, uh, the term in the Greek is pedonum. Um, in the NIV, it's desires and it means pleasures. Um, but you need to know what word comes from that. It is the source of the English word hedonism. Mm. Uh, the, the designation of the philosophy that views pleasure as a chief goal of life. Now, now let me help you with hedonism. Hedonism means that you run after the things that give you pleasure. Mm -hmm. And, and watch this, at, at, at any means necessary, you'll run through people, you'll cheat, you'll lie, you'll steal, so that you can get what you want, all right? You don't care who it would hurt, you don't care what rule you break, as long as you can get you, you, at all costs, you know, that, that, that you first. It, 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 it all pertains to what I want in life and how I want it in life. And because of that, um, uh, I set my philosophy, my way of thinking, my my, my way of living, um, where where I'm out to get everything I can by any means necessary. Okay, and we've got a lot of hedonism going on now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I get I get so much father because I like watching the news. Um, uh, 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 this week. Um, yeah. This week, you know, you have to keep up with the foolishness. Um, uh, Donald Trump is taking over the RNC. Yeah. 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 Now you say, well, that, is that usual? No. no. And they taking over fire, mass fire. fire. Everybody at the top, watch this. Here. All the people who believe that we need to take the donations that come in to the Republican National Committee and, and, and we need to spread them out so that we can fund races and don't fight all them. <laughs> and put in new people. His daughter said the number one thing is to get my daddy uh, back in, in the office of president, which means to pay for all of his, all of his legal fees and, and, and especially his fee that he done lost. First of all, he owns um, I think it's uh, yeah. 400 million to the yeah. New York yeah. and then to that lady, the author, the old 90 some million to her. So, so first thing they're gonna do is take all the money and pay all these bills. Yeah. By any means necessary. Yeah. I'm first. Yeah, I have, I you know, 
So, so hedonism is chasing your flesh, putting you before everybody. All right. James pictures these pleasures as residing within his readers. Remember, now he ain't right to the world. He writes to the Christians who are spread abroad. abroad. Um, so he writes to church folk. Uh, he, he, uh, they're carrying on a bitter campaign to gain satisfaction. Pleasure is the overriding desire of their lives. Nothing will be allowed to stand in the way of its realization. That's what hedonism is, where well, you just run over anybody. Mm -hmm. Say, well, what you stealing for? You got plenty of money because I want more. Mm -hmm. why, why, why would you mistreat somebody? Because I want more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hedonism drives a whole heap of stuff. Mm -hmm. All right? When I when I become the CEO and I decided, you know, I decide I want to make millions and then give myself millions of dollar bonuses every year, and at the same time, I ain't paying but minimum wage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and no taxes. And I'm cool with having my employees live off of food stamps and welfare. That means everybody else is helping to supplement what I won't pay. Mm -hmm. So I can get another island. Mm -hmm. Or like my man at Enron, I can get a gold toilet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gonna know it's good. Gold, solid gold toilet. Baby. I mean, they must be a, you gotta feel some kind of way on the buttocks. <laughs> solid gold toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because I can't. Um, so, so yeah, um, we see that. And, and when you see people chase this stuff, it, it becomes um, immensely astonishing that they would put themselves before every body, okay, so that they can have what they want. The NIV translation, you want something, is not quite forceful enough to fit the context or represent the Greek verb. Um, there's a verb now. I can't see it from this distance. Um, let's see if I can see it from here. Oh, yeah. Um, Epithemite uh, expresses longing or eager desire. Bushel says, uh, epithemia is anxious self-seeking. And in Exodus chapter 20 in the Septuagint, which is the Greek version, in Romans 7 and 7, uh, epithemis is the Greek translation of the 10th commandment, do not covet. Yeah. So James says, you eagerly desire something, but you don't get it. So strong is the desire that you will kill and cut it trying to get it. That, that you run over laws <coughs> just to get it. Have you ever met somebody like that? Don't raise your hand if it's you, but have you ever met somebody like that? Where, where, where they'll go, go all out Go all out to get certain stuff. Watch this. That ain't theirs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, go all out. See if they can get your job. Mm -hmm. Go all out. See if they can get your spouse. Mm -hmm. Go all out. See if they can get get anything that you got. Mm -hmm. and, and matter of fact, they ain't want it until you got it. Yeah. And so instantly, it becomes their desire, their main focus. And they'll do anything to get it. cheat, steal, kill, whatever it costs. And so he's using the stronger language so that you understand this ain't some uh, uh, petty pleasure seeking. This is pleasure seeking to the level that you are at the level of almost doing anything for it. Mm -hmm. That 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 your that your character becomes changed. Mm -hmm. That 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 you are. So self-centered, so pleasure-driven, so fleshly focused mm -hmm. that you'll forsake everything that represents God and his spirit. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes. This last statement has aroused um, much discussion. Uh, let's see. Um, first, it is difficult. It is difficult to believe that James's readers 
whom he elsewhere addressed as Christians in chapter 2, verse 1, were actually guilty of murder. Some insisting that the word must be taken literally to say that James is not referring to any specific occurrence, but is indicating what happens when men desire pleasure rather than God. Yeah. Okay. Um, this interpretation, however, does not do justice to the pointed accusation you kill. In the context of forceful words such as polemio, wars, and makai, makai, excuse me, battles, it seems better to take fonete, uh, you kill, as a hyperbole for hatred. This also resolves the problem of what seems like an anticlimactic word order. To say you hate and covet is as much more natural order than to say you murder and covet. Because if you don't kill, it, it, yeah, the covet loses its point. But you hate that now, now we all there. Yeah. <laughs> Furthermore, Matthew 5 20. 1 through 22 and, and 1 John 3.15 says, whoever hates his brother is a murderer. Mm -hmm. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Mm -hmm. Show that hatred is equal to murder. Mm -hmm. So so he, he's not saying, I got word that one of y'all done killed somebody down there. Mm -hmm. But I got word that you got that hatred mm -hmm. in you that you could kill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and, and if, if, if if you don't check yourself, you're gonna soon wreck yes. yourself. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. that that you got you got purity mm -hmm. hatred in your heart mm -hmm. because Jesus says, "As a man thinking, mm -hmm. so is he." Right. And sometimes you got to check your thoughts because yes. because you think, "Ooh, I wish, yes. he, I wish somebody killed yeah. him." <laughs> Yeah, and, and after a while, your thoughts will give you away. Yeah. All right, you got to pray for those who 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 who, who despitefully use you. Uh, right. You got to love those that you know really hate you. Right. Yeah, and you can't get caught up in, into that. Yeah. But he says, listen here, we got a problem in the church, and the church is is got a lot of fighting and quarreling going on. He he, he says, you all. You all got some unchecked hatred and some covet for them. Hatred to the point that if you don't check it, somebody's gonna get killed. Yeah. And he says, and, and, and watch this, what's at the core of it? What's at the heart of it? Well, what's at the heart of it is, is somebody, uh, uh, people are being just self-centered and pleasure-driven. So what are some of the ways we can be self-centered and pleasure-driven in the I church? Because I want it my way. Yeah. And if you don't give it to me my way, then I'm, I'm ready to tear this place up. <laughs> yeah. Many a church fights happen because somebody wanted it their yeah, way. Right. You'd be surprised how many churches done fell out over road covers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Room designation. Mm -hmm. Who's singing and who ain't? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who got called and who did? And when you're looking at all this stuff that keeps churches in strife and keeps churches fighting one amongst the other, when it all boils down, and of course you know it ain't godly, but when it all boils down, it boils down to some selfish desire. Mm -hmm. People want to please themselves. Yeah. And so when you get to that kind of point, you, God's been out the door. Mm. Your thought is so far in from God. No, 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 no. You, you straight hood now. Yeah. yeah. And then you jump up and then tell sister so-and-so, don't let me catch you in the parking lot at the church. Yeah, you, you, you all about it now. And you done missed the point that you in God's house. And, and watch this, whenever we start majoring in the minors 
and minoring in the majors, mm -hmm. then stuff like this gets started. Yes, right. I have yet to see a church fight over soul winning. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I ain't seen the church split yet over soul winning. Mm -hmm. Because so and so of them ain't, ain't, ain't bringing in enough people, Pastor. And we done brought in all these people, and then so and so, and not fight to bring out. I've I never seen that. Mm -hmm. But I have seen church fights over foolishness. Yeah. yeah. Because most of the time that is going on, it's somebody fighting for what they want. Mm -hmm. And never mind what God has commanded us. Okay? So, um, Uh, James repeats his um, assertion that with all their consuming desire and bitter antagonism, his readers were not able to obtain what they wanted. The reason was that they were going after it in the wrong way. They did not, watch this, ask who? God. Ain't ask God. They were lusting and fighting rather than praying. Oh my God, I get this myself, I get it. Um, <laughs> in verse 3, it says, um, and even when James' readers uh, did ask for things, they did not receive it. Why? Um, because they asked with the wrong motives. There's a lot of prayers we pray and we ask God for, and God said, oh, no. Because your motives behind it are ugly. Self-centered, mm -hmm. the desire drip. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, God, give him a stroke. Give him a stroke. Oh, my. Well, that's shame. And God can be your henchman like that. And you imagine praying a prayer, and you can pray folk dead, folk be dropping all over the place. Yeah. And, and, and God know better than the answer. Oh, he put prayers. That a lot of our prayers are self-centered. I, I was watching the movie um, uh, uh, Bruce Almighty and, and he was complaining to God that he meets God Morgan Freeman plays God he meets God and, 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 and God decides okay since you think this is so easy being God I'm, I'm going to let you I'm going to give you a little taste of Godness let you be God for a little bit and, and, and he started um, getting emails and, and, and the emails were people's prayers Mm. And and so when he hit the button to see how many he had, he had a million. <laughs> it was just stretched out. He said, "Oh Lord!" So he started reading these emails, and he knew he could never get to the end of them because he just kept reading people. And so he decided to hit control and say yes to all of them. <laughs> and by the time he said yes to all of them, the world. It started going in chaos. And, and, and number one thing, they said, can you believe it? Over a million folk hit the lot. <laughs> that the number one prayer request in one area was that everybody hit. Do you know how many folk pray to hit the lottery? Lord, please. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Give me the sixth number. Let these six be the one. Let this be the power, Lord. And if, if God answered that prayer, yeah. And, and I sat there and looked at that and I had to laugh. I said, well, you know, guess, I, I, yeah, people do pray for that. Not only do people pray for that, they come when, the, when, ooh, when they start getting up there. Ooh, so I'm going to church to pay my time. <laughs> so, so I get like like tired of the juju. So I get some juju juice and I'm gonna hit these numbers. And that's just that's just that's just a, a fiction of folk imagination that you that, that there's some kind of vibe you can get to make things go your way. Yeah, so I'm gonna pay my time. So these. So that ball bounce right when they when they when they start the lottery and the ball start bouncing. Yeah, listen, whole heap of people do that. Yeah, he's saying the reason why God doesn't answer your prayer is because you got the wrong motive for it. Yeah. Yeah. God said, "Listen, 
I can't get you to come to church at the salary you work at now. <laughs> And half you don't tithe on that Saturday, and you talk about God. As soon as I hit it big, when you bring my ship in, I'm gonna show enough tithe. I'm gonna pay off whatever the debt that church got. God, I'm gonna pay that. Pay that. Up. God said you ain't did what I asked you to do. That's right. First thing first. So, so watch this. When you are living for pleasure, when you are seeking the desires of your own heart. When you are running after the things that make you feel good and you and you try to bring God in it, God ain't answering that stuff. Because you ask, I think King James says, but you ask the miss. Yeah, you ask it for foolishness. All right? He goes on. He says their purpose was to spin what they got for pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so when you start asking God to give you stuff so that you can get more stuff, yeah. Because watch this, most of us over here, and, and, and watch and we, we say, man, we 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 live um middle class, and, and there's some folk who, who who live um who, who live at the bottom in poverty. And, 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 and watch this. You think you got it real bad. Mm -hmm. But but somebody from a third world country come over here and yeah. see yeah. what you got. Yeah. Uh -huh. Woo! <laughs> what you talking about? Yeah. yeah. We, 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 we met a long time ago. I was with Pastor Bailey and um, met this girl from uh, some part of Africa. I forgot where she was from. Um, and, and I mean, she, she was over in um where were we um Liberty City Old Town somewhere somewhere in Miami but but I do know it's the projects and and three of the project buildings were boarded up and she was living in one of them and I mean the, the next door boarded the other side boarded and behind her boarded and I'm like, well, how still, why she still in here? And, and, and she came out and, and we were talking with her and she said, oh my God, oh my God, I, there's water. I can go to the sink. There is water. I turn it on. There is water. And I'm like, look at the roaches and the rats running. Listen, that, that bothered her not. She said, do you understand how far we have to go to get water? And here I can turn a knob. Yeah. yeah. And I can sleep without the rain. No air conditioning in the heat of Miami. Mm -hmm. And she's so happy, got a window up. Living. And to her, it was like she was in a mansion. Mm -hmm. Had a refrigerator. She ain't never had that in her whole life. And 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 watch this. We we miss it because we so used to stuff. Until I, I declare his best way for every every child ought to spend a summer in a third world country yes. working. Oh, yes. And when you come back here, they, they you discover they they don't want George. They just happen to have shoes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Ain't interested in Louis and, and Gucci. <laughs> they just at this point they understand. Hell, I get an allowance. Mm -hmm. Cause you ain't seen people getting their drinking water from the same stream that somebody upstream bathing in. Mm -hmm. Oh, true. And the things we take for granted. Yeah. And to go for God to beg for something else. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where there are people who ain't had food in three, four days. Mm. And they digging through trash piles mm. just to find something to put in their mouth. Mm. And, and here we are over here. Lord, help me get this new Mercedes. I need this new Mercedes. <laughs> 
help me crazy. Let it go through God. Let it go. Not that you walk it. <laughs> yes. Or more. compare what we ask God for. It, I mean, if once you come from over there, you're almost ashamed to even go back down on your knees to ask for foolishness. Mm -hmm. Lord, help me get this pool in the back of the house. And you can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> understand it because we miss it. Mm -hmm. It's 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 crazy. My, my, my son who's 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 doing his residency now um and, and came across woman in the hospital and her family and literally they, they they were migrants. They they came from uh, South America. They they part of that group that walked all the miles mm -hmm. and got here. And, and and they they walk because watch this. She has a cancer, and they were just trying to get here to mm -hmm. get her some help. Yes, yes, yes. And the thing is, they got here, and, and it's and it's it's one of those cancers that is very beatable. If you get the drugs, yeah. they can't afford the drugs. So he's referring her to social services to see if they can get the simple drugs. And he and he says, when I when I told her, here's the drugs that you need, yada 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 yada. And, and she says, is there any way the hospital can give it? He said, no, I can only give you this supply, this prescription to, that you got to refill. And and said so we we can't afford. It. And he said, literally. It was like I gave her a death sentence. Mm -hmm. Everybody ain't coming to get your job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some folk just coming because they just need some help. Yes. Yes. And you and, and watch this. And we got it. Yeah. But but here's our response. No, we want to be the only ones who got it. And you ain't. I'm sorry. And ain't none of us here deserve to be here unless you're Native American. Because all of us immigrants, we by force, some by choice. Yeah. And you'll be surprised what folk doing, hey, trying to get your job. And matter of fact, watch this here. The majority of the jobs the immigrants get, you, they can't pay you to get out there and pick no cotton right now. That's right. <laughs> yeah, my, 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 my dad and my grandma them were sharecroppers. And, and he used to work during the summer when they were out of school. Hmm. One summer, he took my brother and I, we, we, we worked <laughs> in the orange grove, <laughs> picking fruit. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> had to fill up a bin, a bin is about, yeah, Wait. yeah, yeah, <laughs> that hot. You think that ain't a lot, but when you pulling oranges and you got to get that filled up, and one bin was twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. We worked all week, my brother and I, trying to get one dog on bin. <laughs> <laughs> one thing we did learn out there in that, out there in that, um, out there in that orange grove is listen. <laughs> We're gonna take our bus to school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because this is listen. 
And the first thing he tell you about every tree, so he got to treat every orange tree like there's a rattlesnake up on it. Because oh. watch this, it was nothing for you to see at least 10 or 12 of those every day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, come and get out of it, it, it can't get you back out there. Okay, whatever. Um, so he, he, he goes on. And he says their purpose was to spend what got them pleasure. The prodigal son exemplifies one who spent, uh, same Greek verb here, his money in his way. Remember, he, he, the Bible calls it riotous living. Yeah, and, 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 and we, we started defining riotous as, as, as you know, he, he had women and he, he had all that. that right. Necessary wasn't women. I, I, I like the way we keep adding sins to folk. Didn't mean he really had women. Um, but watch this. He lives so loosely with his money mm -hmm. that he's buying everything he wanted. And he quickly discovered money going out, none coming in. Guess what? Yeah. Yeah, bro, trying to talk to Kim. I said, boy, listen, when we were kids, we wanted to be adults, but then we discovered adulting. <laughs> adulting come with bills. <laughs> I, was, I was telling my kids, I said, boy, they had a 17-year-old girl. She had been finished uh, college and was now getting ready to graduate with her master's at 17 years old. And I said, man, that's amazing. My kids said, oh, she rushing to get a job. <laughs> She run, she run it to the bills, running to get some bills. No, no, baby, take your time. It, it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> take your time. You, 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 you gonna miss all your fun trying to get bills. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, you got to see things different. Pleasure, um, hedon, hedonist, um, is the same word translated for desires. Back in verse one, it was the desire of James's readers for pleasure that was battling within them for satisfaction and even leading them to try to use prayer as a means of gratification. So sad. Um, they were not actually asking for gratification, but for things mm. such as money that they intended to use for pleasure. They wanted to gratify themselves rather than help others and please God. Because when your prayers make God out to be a genie, mm. you know, I get three wishes. <laughs> Lord, give me more money. Yeah, yeah be careful of that. Carapa say more money, no more problems. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 got, they, they interview millionaires, who people who literally earn a million dollars a year. And, and you say, whoo! Oh, that mercy is just me. But watch this. Here. They discovered that a large portion of millionaires live from paycheck to paycheck. And if they miss a paycheck, watch this here. They all struggle. Because most folks, watch this, as you make raises and earn more, you increase your spending. You got to learn how to live. Watch this here. If you could live off of 50000 then if they keep giving you raises until you're at 250000 if you're still living at the $50,000 level. Yeah. Huh. But the more we get, guess what to do? The more we spend. And if, if that's your prayer, God's going to give you more money. Help you hit the lotto. Then you're missing it. You're missing it. What does he promise? He promised us that if we put him first, he will, he will give us our daily break. I keep telling you, that widow is there, fam. Her, her meal never ran over. Her oil never ran over. But she never went home. Oh, right. God said, if I give you everything, I'd lose you. Yeah, that's why you don't have the child a credit card. 
Yeah, one of the craziest things they had when I was in college, I first got to college, and, and, and they had Visa on campus signing folk up. <laughs> Everybody said, Yeah, call. No, where they at? <laughs> when they, they gave me my food itself a call. <laughs> Not one time did they ask if I had a job. <laughs> what in the Hades you thought I was going to do with the car and I ain't got no job? <laughs> How I'm going to pay this back? Yeah, it took me all of one month to run it to the limit. <laughs> I'm looking like now nah, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it, it, listen, I said that was so irresponsible for for my school to let, put, let credit card company get set up. Y'all ain't taught us how to live with credit yet, how to have credit yet, to understand the process of credit. I'm 17. And you gave me a card? Of course I went to the store and bought video games. <laughs> and ate is all the pizza I could get. Pizza on me. White. Cash your credit. <laughs> Always credit. I ain't got no cash. <laughs> It, it, it took me, it took me almost 14 years to get out of that hole. Wow. I know I waited seven for it to drop from my credit report. <laughs> like this, I was crazy. Yeah. So, so be careful if that's what your prayer is, because God, you got to ask God to meet your needs. And, and stop with all the wants sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And, and learn how to tell God, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. What you got? Yeah. Yeah. What you got? Yeah. I, 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 listen, I, I, I was so happy when I got a piece of a car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I was in college, boy. Woo. Yeah. Me and that, me and that brown Chevette. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I had the carburetor spray in the in the car. <laughs> we get at the hill and it, we jump out and spray it. Pump the belt, pump the belt. Now crank it back up. Yeah. I told y'all I, I drove up next to a, a brown bed. I said, "Got my car? That's on my car." <laughs> and I'm looking over in it, and I just sat there and cried. <laughs> It's a God, I thank you. Yeah. So, so, so watch your wants. Okay. So now we go to spiritual unfaithfulness, starting in verse four. Um, in verse four, a commentator says, having identified the source of the bitter fight as being the desires for pleasure. In the first three verses, James next rebukes his readers for spiritual unfaithfulness through verses four through six. The noun translated adulterous people is actually feminine, which means adulteresses. And you got to say, well, why would he put that in the feminine? Adulteresses. That's because God always considers his people Israel as his wife. Christ considers the church as his what? Bride. Okay, so, so of course that puts it in the feminine. The noun translated adulterous uh, peoples in the feminine, it's adulteresses. The people of God in the Old Testament are considered the wife of the Lord, mm -hmm. uh, according to Jeremiah 31 and 32. Mm -hmm. um, and in the New Testament, the bride of Christ, according to Ephesians 5, 23 through 32. Mm -hmm. All right. It's Christ love church. The husband must love his wife. Right. Um, it, it is reasonable, therefore, to understand adulteresses, uh, uh, adulteress as a figure of speech for mm. spiritual unfaithfulness. Mm. Mm. It is a blunt and shocking word intended to jar the reader and awaken him to his true spiritual condition. Mm. That, that, that James called us adulteresses. Mm. That, that you, you're running after your desire, which will lead you away from God. God says, listen here, I've been too good for you now to yeah. go a whoring after something else. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. 
and we sit there and we we read the Old Testament and we say, oh, I never do that. And no, they over at the Baal Temple worshiping Baal. I never do that. I forgot mm -hmm. that all that. You mm -hmm. never catch me over at the Baal Temple. But we can catch you everywhere else. Mm -hmm. I told y'all the, the reason Baal was so popular because it, the temple came with temple prostitutes. Mm -hmm. wow. Men and women. Mm -hmm. Chiseled and fine. <laughs> and God had the dickens of a time keeping his people out, out of them places. Yeah. They ain't got no, you know, I understand. They ain't got no um, bell idols or astral poles in front of the strip club, but they, they, they stay open though. Mm -hmm. They ain't got no bell poles and, 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 and statues in, in front of the casino. But but watch this. I ain't never seen one go out of business. And so the very thing we thought, oh, I would never have to call you. Know, have to worry about me. Shoot. We'll let you get a chance. Yeah. There you go. I I I discovered something that that um I, I can't. I can't tolerate losing money. <laughs> I break out. <laughs> losing money and still got bills. Mm -hmm. No ma'am. No sir. Yeah. I think it doesn't do me no good going to the strip club because I'm gonna give it a fight. <laughs> Show, 
trying to show Israel this is how y'all treat me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's push on. For the believer, however, there are two objectives for affection, the world and God. Mm -hmm. And these two are direct opposites of each other. Mm -hmm. James uses the word cosmos, which means world, as does Paul and John to refer to the system of evil control by Satan. Mm -hmm. It includes all that is wicked and opposed to God on this earth. James is thinking especially of pleasure that lure men's hearts from God. But it's very by its very nature, friendship with the world is actually hatred towards God. Mm -hmm. To have a warm, familiar attitude towards this evil world mm -hmm. is to be on good terms, I'm sorry, is to be on good terms with God's enemy. It is to adopt the world's set of values and want what the world wants instead of choosing according to divine standards. Mm -hmm. That when it all this comes because I'm chasing the desires of my heart. <coughs> right. Because I want stuff. I'm indulging in pleasure. And he says, in the moment you become friends with the world, he said, you did line yourself up to be an enemy of God. And you say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Pastor. You know, we got to go out there with them if we're going to bring them back in. Yes, we do. <laughs> but watch this. Our, our witness with our mouth has to line up with the witness of our lives. Yeah. I can go in the bar and witness. Mm -hmm. But what hampers my witness is when I'm as drunk as everybody else. <laughs> I had a rough day. That's why I've been here. I came here to get towed up. As bad as my day was, Lord have mercy. He said, aren't you from the church? Yeah. Don't you have something better? Not today. Listen, um, you, you, you messed yourself up because you will compromise your witness. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I told y'all we, we met, um, we, were, uh, we had a convention in New Orleans, and, and so we on Bourbon Street. I know. I know what you're thinking. Pastor, you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't be on Purple Street when you in New Orleans. Okay, whatever. Listen, that, 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 I'm gonna be honest with you, that's where Willie Fried Chicken is. They got four of them on Purple Street. Just keep walking. You keep coming to it. Woo, come hot out the grease. They got some honey butter they put on the bed. And oh no, at three in the morning, I'm, I'm in Willis. <laughs> Give me some of those biscuits with this chicken. The Lord have it. Popeyes ain't got nothing on Willis. Anyhow. We, 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 we there and, and um, see some young preachers and they got their bad, you know, National Baptist Convention, uh, Reverend, whatever, whatever, whatever. So Corey go with He say, listen, if you're going to come down here and get a drink, please take that off so that you don't send the wrong sick. Yeah. He looked at us. You, you ain't got to ask what I'm doing. I, I got my chicken in hand and two other biscuits. <laughs> Cheapest meal, listen. Everybody going to eat at the fancy restaurant. No, I'm going to Willis. It's something about two places. When I get there, I, I go to Willis when I'm in when I'm in New Orleans, and when I'm in Memphis, I go to Gus's Fried Chicken. Mm -hmm. You get the Gus, and, and you got to see you flying in in the national convention there. You got to go early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got the Gus flying out the door, down the block, and around the door. <laughs> <laughs> man, I said, man, we need to come back. I said, no, no, we'll find a park spot. I'll go get in the end of the line. <laughs> we can go oh, check man. in the hotel. No, no, we can't check in yet. Not without this chicken. <laughs> I'm taking the chicken to my room when I get to the hotel. We're going to do it right. And I don't know. They, they fried in peanut oil or whatever. Ooh, it is. Yeah, it's shameful. Though. And, you know, it's the. I would, and the lady say, hey, you want a whole chicken? I said, nobody eats a whole chicken. And then I discovered, you can eat a whole chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Shame. <laughs> oh. um, let's see. By the very nature, then, friendship with the world is hatred towards God. To have a warm and familiar attitude towards evil, like I said, this. Um, puts you on terms of being God's enemy. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the person, I'm skipping, the person who deliberately chooses, and he gives you that word there, to be a friend of the world, by that choice, you become an enemy of God. And in verse 5, um, this verse, y'all, is one of the most difficult in the entire epistle. Um, various translations have been suggested, but there is good reason to believe that the translation given in the NIV footnote, so if you got NIV, it still might read wrong, um, for the last part of the verse is correct, and that is that God jealously longs for the spirit that he made to live in us, all right? The NIV text says that the spirit he calls to live in us tends towards envy, mm -hmm. and, and that gets a little problematic trying to figure out what that means. And so the, the footnote on the NIV um, gives you give you more of a contextual text that sets correctly within the context that you're pulling it from. Okay, another reason why you just can't isolate every verse. You got to look at it in its context. And so what he's saying at the end of verse five is that God jealously longs for the spirit that he made to live in us. God says, listen, I put that spirit in you um, watch this, so that you would do the right thing. <laughs> All right? Not so that you would be envious and 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 and, and jealous, yeah. but that it help you to do the right thing. So mm -hmm. verse 4, which is closely tied to verse 5 mm -hmm. um, by the conjunction or, indicates that the believer who is a friend of the world is guilty of spiritual adultery. Mm -hmm. Although his love and devotion belong to God, he has fallen in love with the world. It is natural, therefore, to expect verse 5 to speak of God's jealous longing for his people's love rather than of their envious spirit. And there are Old Testament passages that refer to God as jealous, jealously desiring the devotion of his people. Since there is no passage of which James 4 and 5 is a verbatim quote, that he takes an actual quote, it is best to understand it as giving the gist of such passages as Exodus 20 and 5 and Exodus 34 and 14. And both of those talks about God's jealous. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Exodus 25, he says, you shall not bow down to them nor serve them. Talk about false gods. For mm -hmm. I, the Lord, your God, am a what? Jealous, jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Mm -hmm. And then over in chapter 34, he says, for you shall worship no other God. Mm -hmm. For the Lord, whose name is jealous, is, je is a jealous God. All right, he's a jealous God because watch this, God don't like being cheated on. Mm -hmm. I ain't met too many people who do. Yeah, I met a few people who, who, who like for their spouse to go out and cheat. Strange thing. Strange thing. So the son ain't right with that. But man, so, you know, man say that just, he told me, he said, man, to know that other folk wanna make me want them more. Oh. <laughs> I said, so if nobody wanted your wife, he said I wouldn't want to eat. Oh. <laughs> We got a problem, but you, know, you, you chasing what other folk want. Yeah, you, and that means you really don't know what you want, but you say. Yeah, yeah. So if you got to pick, well, you got to pick a spouse like that. You, you, yeah. So, so you probably need to be by yourself. Yeah, yeah. So, so instead of talking about our spirit being the jealous, it's talking about God being jealous of us. Then listen, I gave you this spirit, and the, you would hope that with this spirit, you would do the things that I commanded you to do and not chase after the things of the world. That, that since you were saved that, and, and, and I baptized you, I buried you in me, and my spirit was born in you, I would hope that you would look like me. Now, every time I look at you, my daddy was here. He said, I got to talk to your mom because you don't look like me. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, that, that's, that's the reason. So, it, even though it, it reads bad, 
um, in the New International, if you look at it with the footnote, it, it becomes a little more clear. Second reason for preferring the NIV footnote rendering is that it more accurately represents the Greek text. It is true that the word pros um, for thonon can literally mean to envy, um, but Bag and he's he, uh, and his power who's re recording from Bag indicate that this phrase was a Greek adverbial idiom meaning jealousy. Furthermore, the Greek verb epipotha is not uh, adequately represented by tens. Uh, Epithetha means to long for or to yearn for something or someone. It is much better, therefore, to translate pros um, phythonin epithetha as uh, longs jealously for. Um, thus, in verse 4, James has accused his readers of spiritual unfaithfulness. If they are not willing to accept this indictment, he asks in verse 5 what they think about the Old Testament passages dealing with God's jealous longing for his people. This is the significance of the introduction, introductory conjunction or do they think scripture speaks without reason or is empty? Of course they don't think this. Consequently, y'all, it is necessary to believe that friendship with the world is enmity toward God. And thus it is spiritual unfaithfulness. Wow. <laughs> and so what he's trying to get is that, watch this, you can't chase everything. Come on now. That part of the reason you have God's spirit in you, this Holy Spirit that's living in you, he lives in you. Watch this here. One, bring all things back to your memories. Two, to prick your conscience. Mm -hmm. he, he's what doesn't let you sleep well after you get through sin. Be, be careful when you can become comfortable with sin. So now that means you don't feel way away from God. That's right. Sin ought to sicken you. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you're on your way from sin, you ought to be cussing yourself out. <laughs> Dog on it, I know better. I, I tell for the banana in the tail by for me. <laughs> yeah. Some things, some things you, you can avoid doing. And, 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 and that's why we have his spirit so that we can let things go. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 um, I got called. Um, Thomas and uh, James Weldon Johnson. I used to get phone calls. And they said, "Fast time, we need to come on, come on." We got him in the office. I said, "I'm on my way." <laughs> Grab my paddle and, and put it in the truck, and I was on my way. On the way out the door, Coach Miller say, "Whoop mine for me." I said, "I'll get it too." <laughs> I know whatever they doing, they doing it together. Lord have mercy. And so I got down there, and I'm like, "What now?" And, and, and he's sitting on the wall. Damn, everybody else was good. I said, hold on. Let me see what everybody else is doing. The lady say, they were stealing sodas out of the machine. I said, what you say? He got Tom. They were all on the wall. And I thought, first of all, I said, all of them stealing sodas? Yeah. Yeah. I said, well, and I pulled my paddle out. She said, oh. You can't do that. You scared kids. I said, I should have walked down the road. I could help, help you with this. I said, but he's finna get healed because he know why. I said, ma'am, how much is the soda? She said, soda is one fifth because he had not got the bottle. One fifth. And, and I said, what you say? What you say? I, and she said, oh, don't, don't, we don't, don't, don't. I said, no, ma'am. I said, I said, empty your pockets. And he had $37 and some change in his pocket. I said, that's why I got to beat him. I don't know how much money he got on. And he said that I watched that pay when everybody else was getting one for free. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Everybody getting one. Everybody stealing. I look crazy. If I was the one who paid for it, knowing that everybody else, I said, if everybody was jumping off Matthew, you jump? <laughs> is that philosophy fit? Yeah. Because sometimes, watch this here. We, 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 
we know what's right. Mm -hmm. But because we don't want to be the odd man out or the odd woman out. Yeah. Yeah, we knew the Louis Vuitton bag was stolen, but hell, they were selling everybody for $50. I got my 50 out too. Because <laughs> I got one at the house I paid real money for. Yeah, took two checks. See, see things in our mind. And you know sometimes, you know it's wrong, but you want to be in with that. That's, that's happening. <clears throat> and they say, you know, you, you've done that. And when you've done that, you, you've hurt God because you've aligned yourself with the world. <laughs> this is something that the world would do. Yeah. I, I've been guilty. Remember, remember back in the day, there used to be people who could give you free cake. <laughs> no, I like you don't forget. <laughs> Man, come to your house. You give him a hundred dollars. Get that ladder, go up on the pole, go in that thing and start twinkling. And you in your house? That's it. Thank you. See now, why should I pay for it and everybody else on the street keep looking up? See, see, once you start saying it like that, somebody say, are you a thief? Oh, no, I'm not a thief. <laughs> I can get stolen out of my life. Then you hire that man to go up on that pole. <laughs> see, because we miss stuff like that. It, it's, it's almost built into us that this is free cable. <laughs> No, as much they want for this meal, they don't lost their mind. Yeah. And so somebody come along and show, yeah, we we cool. I had a guy who come in and he could peel the chip out the back. That's when you had the box that used to click, 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 click on the thing. Yeah, go in that there and peel the chip in there back a little bit, and you get every station you want. Wow. Yeah. So, so. It's not that we don't have opportunity. We do. And sometimes we justify. Mm -hmm. I don't be the only one on the block who paying. And something go wrong with my cable. Yeah, I call them, and, you know, I, I got to tell them because it's the problem because they get the free cable <laughs> next door neighbor across the street. The whole time you need to go check them. Yeah. Listen, we, we have to, if you're going to represent, then represent. Yeah. Even when it ain't to your advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 With me? Mm -hmm. uh, it's tight, but it's right. We keep moving. NIV, uh, verse 6. NIV makes the words, uh, but he gives us more grace. He gives more grace. A part of the question of verse 5. However, this arrangement is contrary to almost all other current <laughs> translations of the verse. It should be noted, y'all, that the words he gives more grace are not found in the Old Testament in connection with any statement about the jealousy of God. Instead, they are taken from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34, which is quoted in the latter part of James 4 and 6. It is better, therefore, to end verse 5 with the question mark and to make the clause, but he gives more grace a new sentence. The meaning of verses four through six would then be that God has set a high standard for um, wholehearted love and devotion on the part of his people, but he gives grace that is greater than the rigorous demand he has made. This assurance, y'all, is documented with a with the question from the Old Testament. The point of the, I'm sorry, with the quotation from the Old Testament. The point of the quotation, as James uses it, is in the second clause. The reference to the gift of grace looks back to God's demand for loyalty in verses four through five. God in grace gives his people the help they need to resist the appeal of the world and to remain loyal to him. 
the reference to the humble mm -hmm. constitute the themes for verses 7 through 10, mm -hmm. where James pleads for submission to God. Mm -hmm. The humble are the people who will mm -hmm. submit to God's desire for them rather than proudly insisting on satisfying their own desires for pleasure. But that's a mouthful of pleasure, uh, Pastor. Let me come and get you. That God's grace gives his people the help they need yes. to resist the appeal right. of the world right. and remain loyal to him. That's the part you need to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that God will give you in that time when you're tempted. He ain't never, <coughs> uh, you never face a temptation that you can't win. That's right. mm -hmm. Yeah, you can walk away. He's gonna give you. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna walk away. Gonna walk away because 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 there's some things that are better than what's before me. Yeah, yeah. Some some things that are better. Mm -hmm. If one starts with peace of mind. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Sometimes yes. sleep is better. Yes. Because some stuff we do keep you up all night. Yeah. Oh, I wonder did they see me. <laughs> Every time the police get behind you, you go to jump. <laughs> well, I think they're coming out of here. It feel like you're riding dirt. And I had, had some guys on the boat, um, Tom's friend, them, and um, the Marine Patrol pulled up on us. We were about 12 miles offshore. And, um, you know, you see them coming. So, okay, they're coming. And, and um, uh, one of them got real antsy. <laughs> And I mean, he done got to the front of the boat, and he is literally contemplating jumping in. And, and, and did I say we were 12 miles offshore? You can barely see land in the distance. And he, been, and he can't swim. I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> what decisions are, is going on with you? So man came over, of course, he checked my license and boat registration, and then he told us to have a good day. And he rode off. So when he rode off, I, looked, I said, bro, wait, where you going? He said, I'm about to jump in. I, I ain't nowhere. <laughs> you can't swim. Yeah. And you think he's going to let you start stroking and not ride behind you and get you? So why are you? He said, because I, 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 I think I got a warrant. I said, that's the game patrol. He don't care nothing about no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make sure you got a license to fish. Oh, he ain't even running me. <laughs> you finna jump in the wall. I said, you make me think if we were in the car and I got pulled over, you gonna jump out of the room. Yeah, I jump out of the room. <laughs> You can't live so ragged yeah. that you got to worry about everything. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, you can you can you can mess over people so much that you got to live looking back. Yeah. Knowing they're gonna catch you eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so sometimes, watch this, God gives us enough grace to pass on stuff mm -hmm. that, watch this, so you can rest, baby. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you ain't got to be a schemer all your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people ain't got to come after you. If, if you did it right, you can rest. Mm -hmm. They know they're pulling us over. Amen. Yeah, I'm not riding dirty. Yeah. So sometimes, if you live right, you can get more peace. Yeah, God said, I've given you the grace so that you can quit tripping and shooting after the world. He says, but watch this here. Also, you need to understand that you can sleep and live in peace. My whole time. My time up. <laughs> okay, where, where, where am I? At six, we'll stop at six. I promise I'll pick up on, on seven. So okay. so you need you need to see this that, that God is offering a better way. That that He's given us His Spirit, not for us to chase after the desires of our own heart, 
But watch this here to chase after the things of God, yes. to do things that will bring him glory yes. and not just our own selfish gain. Okay. okay? So, 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 so that's, I'm gonna, let me, let me put a pin there. Cause, cause, cause I do want to come back because he ends pretty good on this. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Before we go into the next part of it. Uh, so, so I do want to do that. Maybe you're here tonight and, and you don't know the Lord Jesus and the pardon of your sin. Or maybe you need a church home. If that's you, then we offer Christ to you and we extend Abyssinia's hands to you. If you're online and you want to become a member, all you have to do is email us at join at Abyssinia.org and we will definitely follow you up. If you're here, all you got to do is let us know and we'll take you in. I, I want to thank you for spending this moment with us. It's our giving time. Um, and so come on. If you're here, they're passing the baskets. Listen, if you're at home, you, you can give uh, on several ways. If you've got Cash App, our Cash App handle is dollar sign the app 101. Um, yeah, dollar sign the app 101. Please put your whole name in the four column. Uh, or you can simply go to abyssinia.org, click on the online giving button, and you can give that way. Um, and see the other ways to give. Thank you so, 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 so very much. <clears throat> While we're doing that, real quick, some announcements. Um, uh, this Saturday, we're holding our uh, annual, annual uh, church-wide cleanup, and we're asking everybody to come uh, at 9 o'clock. I'll probably have the Continental Breakfast start at 8.30 uh, so we can clean um, and look at parts. And it's a shredding day also, so if you've got files that you need to shred um, and you've been sitting there cutting them piece by piece, come bring it all here and throw it in and let people do it. Um, and you can have stuff shredded. We're going to have a dumpster drop so we can get a real a lot of stuff that's clogging and, and cluttering uh, the hallways and the stairwells around here. And see that soft is full of fire marks. Come look at everything. Listen. So, so let's get rid of some stuff and let's let's boost up our church. Also, at one o'clock on Saturday is the homegoing service for Sister uh, Dolores Burns. Dolores Burns. That's Saturday at 1 p.m. Um, please come out and support the family uh, as they are coming to do a homegoing celebration of their loved ones. And so we'll be here for that. Um, also, I've been asked again, it is our first fruit season where we have members who are giving sacrificially and sowing first fruits. Um, Pastor, I'm always asked, Pastor, please explain that some. Um, listen, I, I tell everybody, if you are not a tither, then please, you cannot do first fruits. Um, we just need you to start tithing. God says, listen, I, I honor um, obedience rather than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. All right. So so do that. And, and God's going to bless you. If you are and you want to give sacrificially uh, the amount of your first income for the year, you can always do that. Of course, in the first fruit is the type. So you don't have to ask, do I tithe? On that day that I'm doing first fruit, it's all included. Mm -hmm. So you could, all right? And so we do that. You can do that at any time going forward uh, for the rest of the year. So um, that's one of the things you see folks doing when they hand the envelopes in the pulpit. You too can do that. So thank you so very much. Um, I think I got everything. Sunday, we are honoring uh, 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 Reverend Richard Black on Sunday. It's been a little touch and go. People say well, we haven't announced it because we weren't sure if uh, if Reverend Black is going to be here in person. Um, if he's not here, we know that he's home watching the broadcast and so we'll still do that and we'll still play the videos of members who send in their love and those who want to give and to speak. We'll still do that so he can hear everything at home. Um, 
the reason that's been touch and go, one, he just got out of the hospital a week before last. And two, Sister Black it was in the hospital, in my understanding, um, that she went home today and they do, they're doing now hospice um, with, with Sister Black. And so um, if you know <clears throat> Reverend Black, he'll tell you, I ain't leaving my baby. Mm -hmm. I ain't leaving my baby. And so um, that's where his heart is, and I understand that. Yeah. So um, uh, I know his daughters are coming, and if he gets a chance, he might try um, to get here on Sunday. But if not, we fully understand. We can still celebrate. We're gonna give him all his gifts. Yeah, um, we'll have them taken to him so that we can we can do that. So we're coming. His favorite color, you know, is blue. And so we are wearing our blue in honor of Reverend Richard Black. Um, he's been here, Lord knows. Um, yeah. Um, and we, we've talked about all his positions. I, I never knew he was an usher, so that was way before my time. Um, he was an usher, then, and then he was a deacon. Um, he used to be chair of our finance, um, and then he became a minister. And then um, a couple of years ago, I ordained him. And he'll now represent something. So um, he's been faithful. He's been faithful. And mm -hmm. so this is how we're celebrating him while he's yet alive. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So that we can do that. I, 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 I'm so disappointed because COVID caught us. Um, and Sister Morton was tired. Mm -hmm. And by the time we got back from COVID, her health had failed so bad mm -hmm. that we couldn't um, bring her here because she was. Um, having dementia and she didn't know what was going on. So my desire was if I could go back in time somewhere around 2018, we, we would have celebrated Fanny Blue and gave her the retirement. She probably would bust all the way back in because she was determined she wasn't going nowhere. Um, don't y'all touch my stuff. That was good. <laughs> Years ago, we were in the old building, in the old church, and she went on vacation. And so the staff went in and, and cleaned her office. And if, you, if you've ever been in Sister Moore's office, have mercy. Matter of fact, Sister Moore had a table outside the office because she couldn't get in the office. It was so much paperwork. Every program that it was ever done in Abyssinia was there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's files were in her office. Everything she collected was in her office. Wow. And so you can imagine, you couldn't even find the, the, the phone. So finally, she pulled the phone out to the table outside the office. There's no way, I mean, literally, stacks of paper go up and then come across the bed. So it was, they cleaned it up for her. And when she came back, we thought she was going to be excited. <laughs> <laughs> came to my office she says have you ever been raped before I said no no I haven't I pray God that I never get raped that's how I feel y'all raped me while I was gone y'all raped me when in my office we went into the morning office we found about $14,000 in checks and cash. <laughs> and she had never gave her the attorney. She put it down and forgot that she had. I said, Lord, have <laughs> 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 wow. That was my baby, though. So, so we're going to celebrate uh, Reverend Black. Uh, and we hopefully he'll be here. Hopefully, and we're praying that everything is well so that he can be here. All right, come on. We, we stand there. Did I miss anything, Kimberly? <laughs> Good. All right. Come on, y'all. I'm sorry. I know. I got four minutes. Two minutes. Um, benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the communion of his Holy Spirit may it rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us. Now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.